Up until now, climate change has mostly been a story about challenges. Challenges to our communities, challenges to our economies, and challenges to the natural environment that sustains life on Earth. But with challenge comes opportunity. Opportunities to live and work more sustainably. Opportunities to transform economies. And opportunities to shift to a low carbon, climate resilient future. But here's something that might surprise you. Action on climate change is not some far off event. There is an enormous groundswell of action already underway to fight climate change. It's happening right now, all over the world. That's why climate change is also a story about hope. There are thousands of examples of people taking action to address climate change. We want to take a closer look at some of these people. By sharing their stories, they show us that action on climate change is creating green jobs, inspiring entrepreneurship, and creating ripples that spread across communities and economies. Take India, for example. In the slums of Bangalore, an organization called Pollinate Energy is creating green entrepreneurs and bringing solar lighting to the city's most vulnerable populations. At Pollinate Energy, we're a social business that improves the lives of India's urban poor. We do this by providing them with access to clean energy technologies. So in India, there's around 390 million people who don't have access to electricity. And we found that a lot of these people were living in non-permanent urban settlements with about five people in each tent the size of your dining room table and a perfect candidate for something like a solar lantern. Here in Bangalore, we have a network of micro-entrepreneurs, which we call pollinators. They're from the areas around the communities. They speak the local language. They spend time with the communities explaining the products so that they can understand them. And then they provide them with a payment plan so they can pay the system, which costs $30 off over five weeks. The way that they keep track of this is through a mobile phone app. On top of the fact that they have a job and they can earn money, uh, a big benefit is the fact that they now have a community and a sense of belonging. So in India, there's around 390 million people who don't have access to electricity. And the aim is over the next 10 years to try to get to the 53 cities in India with more than a million people. Green entrepreneurship is the key to shifting to a green economy. In Ghana, green entrepreneurship is being propelled by women's leadership. The Bamboo Bikes Initiative is building not only cleaner transportation options for Ghanaians, but building careers for rural women as well. Bamboo Bikes is training girls in clean jobs and reducing carbon emission. We started as a women initiative. We are three women, and we got to know that women at the deprived communities are they, are, they are suffering, especially in terms of economic empowerment, but they can use the natural resources within their villages or their communities to come out with projects that will really help them. So we are training them on how to build a bamboo bicycle. You know, bamboo bicycle doesn't produce a lot of carbon emission. It's a carbon zero because bamboo contains a lot of oxygen that balances carbon dioxide. The first step is we take you through the plantation, through on how to harvest the bamboo. Then after we take you to the workshop, we take you through a whole lot of process. At least should be five to six months. You should come out, you should produce as a prototype. I love everything about the initiative because after school I was just in the house, I had nothing to do. But when I became part of it, I helped mommy buy one or two things to sponsor my sister's school fest. 
investing in a woman is not only the right thing to do, but the smart thing to do because most women are community leaders and they are really making an impact for change in their communities. In the last few years, we've seen unprecedented leadership by women who are rising to meet the climate challenge. In Australia, the organization One Million Women has one simple goal with big impact. Get one million women to save energy, cut pollution, and reduce waste in their daily lives. One Million Women is about inspiring women to take practical action on climate change. It's about taking bite-sized actions that have real and tangible outcomes. We focus on the things that we do in our daily life. Food, fashion, shopping, travel, home energy, to cut waste, to cut pollution and to save money at the same time. We focus on women that by global standards live very privileged lives in wealthy countries. We do events, we have a really big social media program. And we're sharing stories, we're sharing experiences and then you know that you're not alone. And the website is a wonderful way to do it, and Facebook, because it can literally be the women of the world doing this. And that's really powerful when you know that you are part of a much bigger movement for change. We talk about things like how we're driving less, how we are managing our um, transportation so that we are able to drive less how we're aware of, of the pressure to consume and trying to reduce the impact of that pressure to consume. Things like shopping local and in season. So you can actually use your money more wisely. So all of us have a choice when we have a $20 bill in our hands that we can actually choose to use that money for the good of the planet or we can choose to arm the planet, and um, it is not that difficult a choice. Our philosophy is to act in your own life and try to rise above politics to just get on with it. An action on climate change needs to happen from absolutely every level. Yes, it needs to happen from governments down, but it needs to happen from grassroots up, and it needs to happen all at the same time. Sustainable progress is best achieved when local communities are directly involved in the decision-making process. In Bangladesh, ActionAid is leading an initiative that solves climate-related problems from the ground up. Lalua is a village which is extremely vulnerable being located in the southern delta. And this area is very dependent on rice cultivation and that was being threatened. The community-based adaptation project was led by the women in the communities. Our They have to address erosion, they have to address salinity, and they have to address the frequent floods and cyclones. The community, for the first time, realized that actually women could play this role, and the women started doing an assessment and come up with practical solutions to address their problems. <laughs> They came up with the solutions which worked, which were practical. And today they have not only got food security because they are bringing in the rice, but they have saved and they have created a wealth for themselves. Any one of us would have difficulty surviving with such bare minimums. And not only are they coping, they're coming up with new solutions every day. Living in an area threatened by climate change doesn't necessarily mean that the community must abandon the place that it calls home, but that adapting to a new set of circumstances is possible. The BOMA project helps women living in Kenya's arid north adapt to climate change 
by starting small businesses that help reduce their economic dependence on land threatened by drought. At the Boma Project, we work to help women earn an income so they can accumulate savings and survive drought. Climate change has had a big effect on these communities. What we're seeing in northern Kenya is what we think is happening across all the arid lands of Africa. The pastoralists are settling. Livestock is becoming less sustainable. So now the women and children are left back in the village to survive on their own because it's too dangerous to travel with the herds. We wanted a lasting solution, Boma offered one. And we wanted to empower the women, Boma gave them that. The women go through a two-year period of mentoring. Our local mentors deliver training to them, business skills training, as well as savings training. When you go to see a typical Boma business, you're gonna see a small hut, and they're gonna sell basics like washing powder, sugar, tea. In two years, women are able to double their incomes. And the most important thing is they're gonna have savings so they can survive the drought periods because the droughts are now coming too often and they're too severe. And that's the whole goal of this program. We're graduating women from extreme poverty so that they can better withstand the shocks like climate change. From the most vulnerable populations often come the most innovative ideas. In Ghana, an organization called Recycle Not a Waste employs the disadvantaged in poor urban communities to turn recyclable waste into eco-friendly goods. Reclo, what makes you think before you throw your waste away? One of our main projects is working with women groups. So what we did was that we took them through three months training on how to make beads from plastic waste. Old cassette tapes, old um, plastic in general. And what they do is that they melt them and then mold them into different shapes of beads. And then they sell it to the general public. They also give beads in single sessions to other people who would want to use it for different purposes. We consider waste not just as something we would have to throw away, but something which is more of a material in transition. With the plastic furniture, for instance, one single armchair could have about 400 to 500 bottles. That means that it's about 400, 500 bottles taken away from the dump sites. The sachet pack of water is the best uh, to be considered by most Ghanaians. So it means that there's a lot of that waste that is produced. So Reknoa with our partners have developed other programs where we have some of these made into umbrellas. Uh, we've made raincoats out of that. We've made school bags, career bags for school children, and a whole other things we try to develop. Even though the urban poor are probably not employed, they are very creative people. They are very entrepreneurial. They are very uh, determined to make something out of themselves, to make a living. So their desire to go through all of this helps them to come up with creative ways of using the waste that is collected or that is generated in their environment. So we put them into such a business so that they can collect that waste and then transform it into something profitable. Taking action on climate change involves all aspects of our lives, especially how we use energy in our homes. Governments, too, have a role to play in residential energy use. In Mexico, the government has partnered with international development banks to encourage housing developers to build homes designed to decrease our carbon footprint before we even step out the door. In the case of Eco Casa, we found uh, together with uh, our partners that the best way was to offer concessional bridge loans to developers uh, that have a housing project that meets a certain level of emission reductions. The case of Mexico is particularly relevant because we can see these innovations happening in uh, low income housing. Estamos participando con mil casas. 750 en Héroes Capellanía y 250 en Héroes Monterrey. 
Nosotros nos hemos dado cuenta que no está peleada eh, la sustentabilidad con el precio y, que, y con el dotar de una mejor vivienda a la población. Es una ecuación que se puede combinar muy, muy bien. Eh, desde hace poco más de cinco o seis años hemos estado trabajando con calentadores solares, con reducción de agua, con reducción de calor en las casas, el aislamiento térmico, el tipo de acabados que le ponemos, eh, las medidas adicionales en, en temas de sustentabilidad. Decidimos comprar esta casa por cómo está hecha, ¿verdad? Y por la comodidad que, que nos ofrece. El ahorro energético es importante para nuestra economía, sobre todo. Pues ya no tenemos la necesidad de comprar este, algún aire acondicionado o este, otra cosa ¿verdad? para sentirnos más cómodos. Y ahora pagamos una cuarta parte de electricidad. Nosotros sentimos que en el momento que esto se masifique y que podamos hacerlo de manera total para todas las viviendas que se desarrollan en nuestro país, definitivamente eh, habrá menos emisiones y todo esto mejorará. Y esto se va a poder replicar. Estoy totalmente convencido. Changing how an industry does business can be a daunting task, but Eco Casa shows it can be done. In the Philippines, the Sustainable Energy Finance Program is teaching banks the ins and outs of clean energy to encourage them to lend to sustainability projects. Sustainable energy finance is all about teaching banks about energy efficiency and renewable energy. There's still an apprehension of catering to the sustainable energy technologies, especially on energy efficiency and renewable energy. Lending um, without the SEF is kind of difficult for us, for the banks in general, because we don't have the technical knowledge, technical expertise to handle these kind of situations. In the case of Star Mall here, uh, it's a chiller project. We, we are not familiar with what kind of air conditioning units to use, what kind of power savings there will be. So that's where um, the invaluable support of the IFC people comes into play. The project is uh, completed and it's realizing close to 70,000 US dollars a month in energy savings. Excel Farm is a piggery where pig manure is used to generate electricity through biomass energy. Most of the houses you see in this farm are climate controlled, as we call it. It's very electricity intensive operations where they have to consume a lot of energy to keep the houses cool. And with this project, what happens is you can utilize the waste to focus cold air on the pigs. We're not actually teaching the banks to be engineers, but making them understand by helping their clients improve their energy costs, this product will actually help them increase their loan portfolio and acquire new businesses as well. The role of governments in taking action on climate change isn't just policy oriented. They can provide incentives to businesses and citizens to act sustainably as well. In China, the Clean Development Mechanism Fund is a national climate fund that leverages private sector investment in clean energy projects and supports low carbon growth across the country. China City and Family's National Climate Fund mandated to support efforts to tackle climate change. It ensures that a large portion of revenues from international CDM transactions can be reused to support low carbon development in China. The fund acts as seed money and bridges public and private partners. It will also help introduce innovative tools and spark great ideas. Under the Chui Jiangsu project, we have issued six loans. The total number is 125 million RMB. The the 
，每年呢就消耗的秸秆和农村的呃废弃物是二十万吨，二氧化碳的减排量是二十一万吨，啊，一个是解决了这个秸秆的焚烧问题，啊，保证了环境；第二个呢，就是有力的促进了这个农民的额外的收入，啊，呃，第三个来讲呢，就是。在农民给我们企业之间的这个合作方面，创造了新的模式。俺这是这几个来是有六十多户，呃，农民合到一块儿来运过来的。呃，总体来说，每个季节呢都能够收入就是万把块钱。现在咱这农村呢，呃，咱这生活水平越来越高，呃，吃的也好了，穿的也好了，住的也好了，所以俺老百姓心里可高兴。All these stories feature different people in different circumstances. But they all share the same goal, to build a low-carbon, climate-resilient future. They show that action on climate change is happening on the ground, in communities, large and small, all over the world. And most importantly, they show that there is momentum for change. Change for good.